Soon, soon. Oh, soon, soon. <laughs> it's too funny. Um, I got some questions for you. Are we recording? Not yet. Are we recording? I don't know. I think so. I just got a big, big old thumbs up. Looks like a big bear with a thumbs up. Those of you that uh, can't see behind the scenes, Joe uh, is our producer today. AKA Thanks for Bigfoot. AKA Bigfoot. If you saw him, you'd understand. Uh, and actually, we'll explain the connection later because you just can't run from family. Family just. We want to keep that a little bit of a secret. Okay, we're not going to tell you who Bigfoot is. We're going to keep that a secret. <laughs> uh, but welcome back to the Paint Method podcast. We're calling this the number one paint method podcast in the world it is the number one it is it's the number one we're just going to keep saying it one day we'll be the number one paint podcast and that is solely up to you those of you watching this on youtube those of you listening to this my dream one day is that when people just put in paint on any audio platform the paint method shows up first and it will only happen because of you. So if you're enjoying these podcasts, if you want to hear more, be sure to subscribe on YouTube, hit the like button. So you get, you know, just updated anytime there's a new episode, but especially on audio platforms, be sure to follow the podcast so that when we post a new episode, like today's or, you know, the next one, you always get updated. Uh, That's what I do with my favorite podcasts. And hopefully we can make the cut for one of your favorite podcasts today. I have, uh, I think, one of our most celebrated past guests ever. I don't know if she knows this. I know this because I look at the numbers. <laughs> and in the past, her episode was one of the most listened to, one of the most viewed. And so I was like, we got to get our numbers up, so I got to get her back. But <laughs> this person uh, is incredibly accomplished, someone who has been on a life journey that we can all be inspired by, no matter what you do, whether you're an artist, a creator, uh, a parent. Uh, and especially for her, she ha- holds multiple world weightlifting titles, one of them being uh, first place in the Arnold, which is an international uh, weightlifting. Bodybuilding. Bodybuilding <laughs> competition and and uh, just an amazing uh award that she that she earned also has graced many uh covers for health and wellness including oxygen magazine just to name one of many and also uh a new title recent title my incredible beautiful fiance chadi oh. dunmore soon to be garibaldi. mrs garibaldi yeah <laughs> cuts good they got the shirt on all right yeah. uh let's go ahead and get into today's podcast let's go we are all on our paint journey But where are we now? And where do we go next? This is how passion, action, intent, new, teach. This is The Paint Method. Can can you live up to that intro? Yeah, I'm here for it. (laughs) She's like, yes, actually beyond that. (laughs) I can't believe I said weightlifting when it's bodybuilding. How, like, do people do that all the time? Do they mix those up? I mean, it's like saying karate and you do jujitsu. It's just different, you mm. know? So, but I wasn't going to mess up your intro. I mean, I was digging the weightlifting. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I do weightlifting in our garage. You did bodybuilding and, like, won awards on stages. I did. It's so crazy because I just feel like it was such a, an amazing moment in my life. Um, I'm not there now in that mentality, but it was such a great accomplishment for sure. But that's not something that you set out to do. Like most people, you know, they grow up, they have these dreams, like one day I'm going to yeah. do this. And then some of us are lucky enough to be like hit by these new dreams. Mm-hmm. Like something happens in our life and we're like, I think I want to do this thing. And then you get this like imposter syndrome. Yeah. But then you're like, uh, I'm still going to go for it anyways. Mm-hmm. Is like, what was that like for you shifting from actually paint that picture? Where were you in your life? What mm-hmm. was going on at that time before you shifted into bodybuilding queen? <laughs> um, I was a new mom. I was overweight. Um, I just had a daughter and I gained over 80 pounds. So I was tipping the scale over 200 pounds and um, it was, it was great to gain all that weight. It was fun, <laughs> but I kind of lost myself in that, you know, phase. And I remember trying to lose weight in that, you know, transition period. 
and I had just started going to the gym and I saw a woman in the gym with amazing arms, like really sculpted. And it wasn't too like, for me at the time, it didn't look manly because at that time when you don't know too much about bodybuilding, you think everything, anybody who has muscle is too manly or you're just like, that's just unattainable and I don't want to look like that. And I just remember being admired by her physique. And someone told me that she was doing a bodybuilding show that that week and they were all going to the gym to support her not they were all coming from the gym to support her at the gym um and it was like a new gym that they were like hosting the show and I end up going to support her to see you know what this is all about and everyone's like you should do a bodybuilding show like you could totally do that and I'm like there's no way you're you're seeing these women on stage under these lights with these fake tans um and they're flexing and it just looks so unattainable. She didn't look like that at the gym. She looked way different on stage. And when I saw her on stage, I was like, there's no way I could ever do that. Well, two weeks later, <laughs> <laughs> I, I will was, never do this exactly. and then cut the two weeks. Two weeks later, I'm like, I want to do a bodybuilding show. And I just, my coach at the time, my trainer, who was my friend, he had never coached anybody doing bodybuilding show, but we were just like, let's just go for it. Let's just figure this out on the way. And we, you know, did the show. It was, uh, I think it was Fitness America and it was in Florida and I lost. <laughs> I think I was like second to last place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and from that, that kind of like, you know, unfolded a whole new passion for me that I was like, okay, I suck at this, but I, I really want to be the best. And that's when the light switch went on. Most people, most people would give up when that happens. Yeah. And I have this like belief that when you fail at something you're passionate about, yeah. you're, you have this, this like love to learn more about it. Yes. A hundred percent. And that was for me, that was that moment of like, okay, I know I'm really bad at this. Um, I don't know nothing about posing. I know nothing about like what I'm supposed to be training like and so on. And I just wanted to be, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to be the best. I did that light switch turned on and I was like, okay, I really want to like pursue this. And then that's when I started researching on YouTube at the time. Um, and then uh, just kind of like watching the girls on stage, what the girls in the finals did. And I remember looking at them, I'm like, oh, I could do that. <laughs> and and now obviously you're deep into it, but at the time looking at them, what do you think the difference was between a winner of yeah. a bodybuilding competition and someone who's, you know, midway or, you know, near near the bottom? Yeah, it's repetition. It's practice. It was the confidence that they, you know, ex you know, showcase on stage. I didn't have that. I didn't know how to pose at all. I think you weren't a performer. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I think I went on stage thinking it was all like what my body looked like. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize you have to present yourself in a certain way because I look physically like I can, you know, work out with them and kind of like I look like I depart. But I didn't know how to present myself. And it was a bad thing when you're in bodybuilding. You posing is probably like 80 percent of it. And I didn't know how to pose. Um, I was kind of like waving to my mom on stage <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> and you know what else I did? That's I'm sweet. thinking I'm Puerto Rican. I didn't need it to spray tan. Yeah. Well, so I didn't tan. I didn't spray tan. <laughs> what? That's like, I think that's the one thing that bodybuilders are known for outside of muscles. Oh, my God. The spray tan. Yes. I did not do the spray tan. Oh, I just, my God. I tanned a couple times. And I thought just putting oil in my body would, it literally, I look like the whitest person on stage. It washed out all my, my muscle physique. And um, I just looked like crap on stage. And it was sad. So you, you had this experience. <laughs> it didn't go well. You Now you're thinking, it didn't go well, but I, I still enjoy this. I want to see where this can go. Yeah. You start getting more into bodybuilding. And, and now whether you started doing competitions or not, like mm -hmm. when did you start feeling a shift? Because you skyrocketed at some point, yeah. but pre rocket launch, yeah. what is that shift? Like what's going on in your mind? What's going on in your life during a shift like that? Um, I was married at the time with my ex-husband and I was a new mom. I had so many like new things happening in my life and I think I kind of poured myself into bodybuilding and weight training in the gym because it was the only thing I had control of. And so it was the only thing I can like do myself and like research and kind of present myself where 
being a mom is kind of like it's a new thing and and relationships take a lot and you can't control the other person and what's going on in the relationship to a certain capacity where you're just like um and I kind of had lost myself and then being in the gym was the only thing I had control of so I you know I didn't know what I was doing but I knew what I I knew my f what my effort would be going into the gym and um I just felt like I just wanted to pour myself into weight training and and honestly yes I I sucked the first couple shows um and whatever happened at home was happening and me and being a mom I was just my effort was at its top right mm -hmm. and that's all really that mattered right so when you're going into the gym it's all like max effort Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what they say a lot in the gym. Like, you know, you're always your body will change as long as you're hitting your max effort. And I felt like as long as I did my max effort where whatever was going on in my marriage and whatever was going on being a new mom and me hitting my max effort in the gym, something was going to happen. Something would have to shift. Mm -hmm. And I did the vision board. I did the manifestation. I did the work. And I knew if I just kept my head down and just kept on working something in you know whatever it was going to happen and whether my relationship the gym being a mom was something was going to excel yeah because you know that's all you really can do you know and so um my marriage failed <laughs> <laughs> but, but not without giving your max effort i gave my max effort yeah. for 10 years yes and then i you know being a mom i feel like i'm killing it but when i you know, the gym was like, yeah, I was not winning these shows, but every show was getting better. And then I hit second place in a show. And that was it. That was the carrot that was dangling. And How was, many shows into it were you? Um, probably three to four shows, okay. which is not a lot. But, you know, when you're getting ready for these shows, you guys, yeah. it's a long time because the mental like dump that it does to you it's like it's hard not only physically but mentally and it, it affects everyone in your family because you can't really go out to eat as much you can't like do the fun things so well i'm not gonna lie i know you've uh i'm gonna put you out there you've mentioned recently you're like i wonder you know if i dabbled back into bodybuilding yeah and honestly knowing you mm -hmm. i think at at this point in your life, I feel like you would be the most focused, mm -hmm. the most supported, mm -hmm. you know, just like where we are in our lives that. Mm -hmm. And then also, I think just like the fact that you are in your 40s would be make it even more inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. Almost mid 40s. <laughs> <laughs> but like you don't look like I there. Here's the way people are like, why are you putting her age out there? I'm saying oh, it. I'm proud of it. Yeah, yeah. And I know you are because you don't look your age. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. I mean, I recently just watched the Olympia and I follow a lot of these girls um, throughout my career. And a couple of them I rubbed elbows with on stage. And it's really like, you know, it's it's given, given me an itch to kind of like, what if I poured myself into bodybuilding again? Because I really enjoy coaching. But more than anything, I feel like I've transitioned to different seasons and I feel like I'm back into the um, I want to show others what's capable kind of season. Mm. And I'm we back need a name for that. Yeah. We need a name for showing what uh, showing others what's what you're capable of. Yeah. Season. Yeah. Well, Especially, what you know, what I what I went through and then, you know, going through health issues and still now in my a decade later yeah from winning all those titles and going back into putting one foot in there again now i think that's interesting because you're known for your health wellness journey but you have gone through a lot of different um health challenges mm -hmm. you know um how how does that how do you deal with that mentally when your your brand your mission like what you actually enjoy is health driven yeah but you have these challenges that you can't control oh my gosh it's every day a struggle you know because of like you know my health issues i have a kidney disease um my thyroid has been off since i had my daughter but i you know recently have hashimoto's lupus um has been controlled which is nice but you know, my health and wellness is like, it's everything. I, if I don't focus on it, and when I say health and wellness, it's not just working out. It's not just like looking the part. It's really eating properly, um, not drinking all the time, right? Sleeping more than anything. 
um, being hydrated. It's everything. And if I'm not balanced in all of it, it's a shit show. <laughs> but yeah, and what would you tell someone that say uh, they haven't really started the momentum yet mm -hmm. on their health journey? You know, coming at the end of the year, maybe beginning of the year, they want to yeah. start uh, hitting the gym more, eating yeah. healthy, but they have these uh, things that they can't control that mm -hmm. are health issues. What would you tell someone? And everyone's situation is different. Yeah. Some people are dealing with more serious things yeah. than others. Yeah. How would you tell someone to deal with it mentally or start that journey mentally? Yeah. Well, you got to start focusing on giving yourself grace, number one, because as much as like I have a plan every day, it doesn't always fall into that, you know, that to do list. So I do give myself grace knowing physically I, you know, sometimes I don't have the capacity to even, you know, pick up a weight. So um, it's starting with giving yourself grace. Number two is just creating habits. Um, I'm actually working on a program right now that I'm about to film, which is like four minutes. Just, you know, doing. what was that? Say it again, because <laughs> I want to make sure they hear that. <laughs> How long is the work? Are the workouts? The workouts are only four minutes long. That's it. Four I days a week. OK. For four weeks. Um, so the title is four, four, four. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, there's like a like a spiritual aspect to that. There is a spiritual aspect. But what's the what is the the goal of making four minute workouts four days a week for four weeks? I feel like I have a lot of programs that are so amazing, and I feel like a lot of people struggle is just you know making time, right? I made a post the other day that a lot of people's excuses are they don't have the time, they're stressed, their kids, their health issues, X, Y, and Z, which I have fallen to all those excuses as well, and I've used them as well. But also, too, if you know you have to do something, you're going to get it done, right? Mm -hmm. It's like being a mom when people are like, how are you able to do all this stuff? You can't think you have a choice. Mm -hmm. So if I made a workout that was only four minutes, four minutes long, right? Not five minutes, right? Four minutes, less than five minutes, right? Um, like, what could really be your excuse for that? Yeah. I mean, usually we go to the bathroom for four minutes. <laughs> I mean, Some unless people, right? You're, you're, um, I read the Bible, right? <laughs> when I'm when I'm in the restroom. Now I'm putting that out to the world. Uh, I sometimes read a little bit longer, but uh. but you know, think about something that you're doing for four minutes long. And if you cannot squeeze four minutes long, then you really have to re about reevaluate what are you doing with you know your time. And I believe that too with people. And I I say that people myself when mm -hmm. I'm like I'm so busy I can't do certain things. I reevaluate why am I so busy? Like, what are things that are keeping me from doing the basics, like working out, running, you yeah. know, doing whatever, and just trying to, to minimize or eliminate those? It's just basically, people. sometimes we become our own mountain, mm -hmm. and we find these excuses, and it's also habits, old habits that we're just used to doing, which is scrolling is one of them on our phones. So if I made four minutes of just you just on your phone, maybe looking at the workouts I compiled for you um, that can change and create really good habits for four weeks and that would set someone up for the new year of this new year new you right it's like a pre new year new yeah. you like a pre yeah. you yeah and yeah. people don't have to make it complicated here's the thing you don't need an hour you yeah. know um, there's times that 20 minutes is sufficient mm -hmm. but four minutes is like a no-brainer like anybody could do four minutes it's body weight workouts and there are some workouts with weights, um, but you know you you can do them on your demand, like on your own time. But you have to do those four minute workouts four days a week. So like a college student, you could pick the days that you want to do it, but they have to be done. Do they do that in college? They get to pick the days they go to school. <laughs> no. Is that what happens in college? Well, ideally, like you get assignments throughout the year. Okay. And then you have to complete them, complete them on a due date. Got it. Okay. You're so cute. I didn't want to. I don't want to uh, get off track, but I was just. I was curious. And so, obviously, there's more to it than just the working out. There's yeah. nutrition uh, connected to this, or, or an ebook. Not e sure yet. Okay. Yeah, there'll be an ebook and there'll be videos. Yep. So. Um, I say when I did my bodybuilding goal, when I had my bodybuilding goal, when you had set out to do any goal, you have to have a plan, right? Mm -hmm. And so if there's no plan, there's no vision, there's no you know objective, there's no action set mm -hmm. out. And so I created this, I'm creating this program where I feel like for me, when I had my bodybuilding goal, I set a date for a show, right? 
And when you set a date for a show, it's like a photo shoot or for an appointment. You really can't dodge it. You have it set. So sometimes people are procrastinators and some people are planners. Everyone's different. I think the four minute plan is a great like workout plan for someone who just needs to get it done and they can't really like bob and weave like outside of it. Like it's four minutes a day. And so um, for me, when I was getting ready for these bodybuilding shows, um, when I had set out these goals to do these shows, uh, I figured out these workouts like somehow around being a mom. It was just like figuring out, squeezing it in the nooks and crannies of your day. So that's why I like the four minute plan is just super easy. Now we are the only ones that make it hard, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a no brainer workout program. Yeah. You know, I I always say this too. Momentum is one of the hardest things to start. It it requires so much to get things going, but once it's going, it's so hard to stop. Yeah. And I just, I love, I love that you created a plan to help people build momentum, Mm -hmm. build the habits uh, and I say this because just recently, I mean, I've been running a lot recently, yeah. but I, I've been having to get up early in the morning before the kids go to school and get out there. And it's mornings now are cold. Ugh. It is dark. <laughs> and I'm out there and I'm like, if I just keep, start moving, mm-hmm. I'll warm up eventually. Like my reward is being warmed up and, and also accomplishing it. But I don't know. So I, I love that feeling of seeing the mountain you know, how, knowing that, like, I got to just get, get the momentum going to get up. Do you have a minimum mountain. when you run? So, like, let's say someone's starting out and they want to run, like, seven miles like you are. But yeah. they're brand new. Yeah. What would you say to someone who wants to start running? Like, do you have, like, a one-mile minimum? Like, okay, I'm not feeling it today, but I have to do at least one minute. Yes. Or one mile, I'm sorry. I would say <laughs> if you're going to get into running – Go walk a mile yeah. because a mile in someone's head sometimes feels really far. Mm -hmm. Once you start running, when you start running like three to six miles, you're like, this is nothing. Mm -hmm. When you look at the distance of like where I run, I compare distances of like places on the freeway also. And so when you think about that, so walking one mile first gets rid of thinking about one mile as something that's, you know, unachievable. Mm -hmm. Go walk the mile. Go walk two. And then maybe now it becomes like a time thing. You're like, look, I don't have 30 minutes. So now what I started doing getting back into running is I would jog a mile, mm-hmm. walk a mile. Mm. Or I'd uh, jog for, for two, three minutes, mm-hmm. walk for two, three minutes. Like really give yourself the grace. And this is now I'm running eight miles. I'm trying to get up to 10. That's how I started. And this was a handful of months ago, mm-hmm. if that, mm-hmm. maybe like. July yeah of this year so I just know a lot can change in a month a lot can change in two months even more in three to four so I think one thing we have in common that we both have said in this conversation is giving yourself grace Mm -hmm. right I think that everyone is a beginner in something so every star in their in their field like you and Mm -hmm. me with mine like we all had to give ourselves grace when we we're starting out, right? Because everyone is like, you know, when it comes to even putting yourself out on social media to starting a new project or starting a new business, you have to give yourself grace to just be a beginner because you have to crawl before you walk. There's, it's a, Everyone has been a beginner at one point in their life. So I think that's super crucial when you're starting out and like running, bodybuilding, painting, yeah. becoming a mom, like we're human. Well, especially pursuing a passion when you're a parent Mm -hmm. and, you know, only parents could really relate to this, which is we're the most hard on ourselves about just our parenting experience. Cause most of us, you know, we want to do better than our parents did. And, but we're also still humans. Mm -hmm. Like I realize now my parents are humans. Mm -hmm. They were doing their best and trying to pursue what they enjoyed. We're in it now. Mm -hmm. So I think by doing that, knowing that, like, look, I'm trying to be the best parent, but also I'm trying to pursue this thing. You, the, the, what's between those, what connects those two is grace Yeah. for yourself. Like you have to, you know, not be so hard and just know that I'm going to make progress a little bit here. And then I would add to this, whatever little bit of time you get left. And I'll use this example. If I'm waiting for one of my kids outside of an activity I go run Mm -hmm. and I got this little competition in my head. The other parents don't know this, but (laughs) I, I'm like, 
they're all, you know, they're sitting on their phones, like, you know, probably scrolling. And I'm just like, I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to be different. I'm going to yeah. win this. Mm -hmm. And I put on my running shoes and I go run for 30, 45 minutes and I come yeah. back. Now, no one knows they're in a competition with me. And, <laughs> and no, we aren't. But that's just what I have to get going in my head to say, look, how can you be better right now? Mm -hmm. You're how being efficient with your time. Absolutely. You're making lemonade with the lemons given to you. You know, I'm trying to make... <laughs> A lemon flavored champagne with the <laughs> very ripe lemons that I have. <laughs> I mean, that's what it. It, that's what it really is all about. Like we are, we're giving certain cards, and mm. you have to make the best of it. And I did it too when my daughter. You had a babysitter at the beginning, and I used to go to sleep in my workout clothes and wake. I would work out before she was up. Mm -hmm. So again, you just have to be resourceful with the time that you have, and think of like how can I fit in these four minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. It's only four minutes. That's it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's crazy to see a decade later where my life has brought me from bodybuilding. It's taught me a lot about myself and, um, I just want to continue to like serve and help others with like, you know, not only my journey, but also create these programs where I can kind of give those that bouquet of roses that was given to me from God I feel like mm -hmm. with this platform and I kind of want them to know that you can do so much when you change your mental and physical like mindset um physical mindset your mental mindset how it can just transition into your physical and I feel like me when I started like really focusing on my physical like training um it really was like a domino effect with everything else in my life I realized I started treating myself better by giving myself that discipline to not say no to myself, even though mm -hmm. like I wanted to sleep in, I, I committed a goal. And even though I wanted to sleep in, I felt so much better accomplishing that goal. Like you running during your kids activities, right. Or me wanting to do lunges or something in between something like, you know, it's just fitting it in. I feel like when you start accomplishing those little the checking off the list of mm -hmm. the stuff that you committed to yourself, it sets a like a confidence, like it gauges it a little bit higher. And you, you kind of want to kind of change everything in your life, whether the people you want to set, start setting boundaries with, mm -hmm. um, work, you know, um, how people treat you, um, what you want to really focus on. And for me, that was, you know, I knew it was something that I had to get out of a marriage. I had to change my, circle of friends um what I was putting into my mouth as far as eating what I was watching I really it everything started to shift when I started to focusing more on my physical well-being mm -hmm. and I that's why I'm so passionate about creating like new programs because you know I just want to make it easier for someone because it's not that hard but we make it hard yeah now you could put that in the cat the category of non-negotiables in your life. Yes. You know, some people call them deal breakers. Some people call them, I'm, I'm going to call it a non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. Some people have them for not his, hitting the snooze button. Um, what are some scenarios in your life, mm -hmm. whether it's health related or parenting, whatever it is that are non-negotiable that I'm going to get this done, mm -hmm. you know, maybe paint the picture of the scenario of, uh, this is happening right now, but this has to get done. This thing, it's non-negotiable. Well, working out for sure. I struggle so much with working out. I swear, it's really the hardest thing for me. And I say it over and over again because of my physical health. Um, I don't, I'm not motivated at all. Like, especially in the winter. <laughs> I hate waking up early. I hate being cold. Um, and... I hate feeling defeated and I feel all those three things when I'm trying to train during this time. And, but I also feel so accomplished once I do it, whether if it's 10 minutes, 30 minutes or so on. Um, it's a non-negotiable because I know once I do it, I know that I am taking care of my health to do and be in a better mind, better mindset for my family and for my work and for the people who follow me on social media and for everything else that follows. If I'm not working out and taking care of myself, I feel like I just, you know, I can't pour into others. So I feel like that's a non-negotiable for me because I just feel better. Mm -hmm. And that helps me 
it helps me mentally knowing that I'm taking care of myself because I do struggle with my health the most mm -hmm. and my mental health. I've, I've never struggled with mental health until the last year mm -hmm. where I feel like I had started getting anxiety and started getting depressed. Um, and it was because I was, you know, struggling with my health. Yeah. And I realized, you know, <clears throat> I just got to give myself grace and know that there's going to be weeks that I can't work out physically, but it's just falling off and getting back on. And I think that's a non-negotiable because from the outside looking in, you see a fit person and someone who looks the epitome of health. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people don't realize is that I struggle with my health every single day. Yeah. And I struggle with getting motivated and wanting to work out every single day. But I make appointments. And if I don't make those appointments, it's just never going to happen. So sometimes I like make appointments with people to work out with me or. Or you make an appointment for a date night. Or that's something that's a non-negotiable yeah. with us. Yeah. I, I think too, like along with what you're saying in health, I think when you think about your, your mental well-being and, and the relationships in our lives that, uh, you, I hope that you're in relationships that are benefiting that, mm -hmm. but at least I can speak for us that setting that so that time aside for date nights mm -hmm. has been incredible. Yeah, and it, and it's honestly not even like it's on this day at this time because <laughs> that's not our lives. Yeah, but it happens. Like yeah. we make it happen at some point through the week. It could be a day notice. It could be a week notice. Yeah, but it has to happen. Yeah, I'm. You're really good at, you know being initiating it I'm, getting, I'm trying to get better at it <laughs> I'm getting better I think a lot of people think that we have this picture perfect relationship when we we it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> but it takes a lot of work because yeah. we definitely have to put effort into it mm -hmm. from you know spending time together even though we live together I don't think people understand how busy we are yeah, and that's okay. They <laughs> yeah. don't they don't need to know how busy you are. Yeah. But we know and we still try to find that time. Yeah. You know, I, I think that um and especially this sometimes in, in relationships there's always like that one person who's pursuing the dream mm -hmm. and they hope that the other person just gonna be a supportive partner that just sits there. For us that's not the case. Yeah. We're both parents, mm -hmm. we're both pursuing something separately mm -hmm. and we both have to equally be supportive. Yeah. And Knowing that, uh, I feel like I have an even more appreciation for what you do because mm -hmm. I feel that same support from you. Mm -hmm. You know, having that mutual uh, momentum in life. Yeah. We're, we're parenting, pursuing, and then supporting. Do you feel like our non-negotiable date nights have helped our relationship? Like from someone listening and they're in a relationship and they probably don't do date nights. Why do you feel like that's a non-negotiable? Yeah, I would say you can't. So one thing you can't do in your life is scale relationships. And I'll, and this is like term scaling in business. Like you can scale a lot of things in business. I can automate so many things and even my planning process mm -hmm. to filming a podcast to the post-production. I mean, there's a lot of things in my life I can automate and scale so that I don't even need to touch it. Mm -hmm. but that is not the case with relationships. Mm -hmm. And I've had to learn that over time. I'm glad I learned that with you. And so I look at when we set those times together that there's no other way to connect than to spend time. Mm -hmm. It adds, you know, it helps that one of my love languages is quality time. Mm -hmm. Helps whether that's yours or not. I enjoy <laughs> that, but you just have to realize that there's no automation, no AI, no scaling mm -hmm. any relationship in your life. Go spend the time. And so that's why I've looked at it like this is a non-negotiable. We got to make date night happen. Yeah, it's. I think also, too, we're able to reconnect and catch up, which is super important because our days fly by so much. Um, and again, we're parents. <laughs> we're yeah. busy working parents. And I think that I'll, we're also setting the standard for our kids on like how important it is to value your relationships in your life. Yeah. You know, aside from launching your, uh, your program coming up four for four, aside from that, the next year is coming. Yes. What are like the Super Bowl's coming You're Yeah. January is a Super Bowl for fitness yeah. world. Like yeah. you got that down, but beyond that, 
you know, we've, we've been talking about this whole 10x life mm-hmm. thing. What is a 10x dream for you? A 10x scenario where uh, you're not just slowly, you know, growing a little bit. You're like, this is where I really want to take helping people because that's ultimately what you're doing. That's what your whole brand stands for. Mm-hmm. What's that 10x vision for you? I love that you're bringing up the 10x because I'm currently rereading it. Um, I've read the whole book and I'm listening to it over again and making notes. Um, I just want to be able to be in contact with more people. Um, I feel like we're so blessed that we have the internet as it's like, you know, I have a love hate relationship with it. Um, I just want to be able to have an online program that's more accessible. Um, I feel like my strength is relationships that belly to belly conversations when I have like clients in person clients. Um, they always are excelling with like their weight loss goals to their health goals to their relationship with food. So my 10x goal is to create something so amazing that's on the internet, that's accessible on demand, that people can just press a button and have, you know, access to me. Um, grow my money business with my team where I'm teaching them that financial freedom with, you know, having control of that from again, access on your phone. Um, and, you know, literally just, I, I never really had this moment, but, um, I really want to enjoy being a mom and a stepmom. I've always been on the go all the time, like on a hamster wheel, just kind of like throwing my daughter on my back and like, let's go. Right. Um, I've never really had to had the time to like, cause she's graduating this year, you guys. Oh man. I'm a senior. Um, which is sad, but also y- your time will be freed up quite a bit. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going into this new season again. Yeah. Um, I just want to be more intentional with the people I spend my time with, but you know, just creating stuff where I can connect more. Mm-hmm. That's my 10 X vision where I'm more accessible to my audience and people who really want to connect and more than just a physical like you know training program someone who feels like they are completely balanced with physical mental and spiritual well-being because if you're not mentally okay Mm -hmm. it's really hard to stick to a program if you're not mentally okay it's really hard to like show up for your family if you're not mentally okay it's really hard to show up in general so i think there's a lot of us struggling with mental health more than we can say and admit. Um, Again, I'm educating myself more on this and I never want to portray that working out is easy or showing up is easy, whether if it's in a relationship, being a mom, all of it's so, so hard and what's going on with the world. Just there's so many things going on. Um, I just want to give someone a space to kind of feel like they have that confidence and strength. Yeah. You know, your brand has been built on helping people, mm-hmm. inspiring people. Well, I was it just, wasn't initially. Well, I, I feel you, like it's transitioned in the last five, seven years because of just more turmoil in my personal life. <laughs> well, I, I'm curious. I, w- I would love for you to, to dive into that more because now that it's it has evolved into really wanting to help people from the Monate business, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. And then this health and wellness, wh- where was that shift where you really started caring about how do I benefit people mm-hmm. on this journey? After hitting all these goals and literally checking off my list, um, you guys, I had no idea that I was going to accomplish all that I've accomplished. Yeah. So it's very surreal to me that I was able to land over 16 magazine covers when numerous world titles um and you know have an audience of people just being inspired by me because i hit those goals but i never there was never a a checkoff goal to say i want to inspire so many women or men or whatnot um it was just all about me initially just kind of like rebuilding myself because i was so lost and so depressed and so (laughs) Mm -hmm. um and getting feedback from people saying you have a you know, inspired me to push through. That's when I had that switch where I was like, oh, I'm able to help others by sharing more about my journey, but more importantly, being intentional about it. Mm -hmm. 
that's when I was like, okay, now I want to shift and leave the whole bodybuilding world. And that's why I left because I, I didn't need the, it wasn't about the ego of like winning more titles. I don't want to say, take that away from anybody who's still competing, but I felt like I needed to pursue some other goals and I didn't want to make it about me anymore. And also too, it is really draining competing and making it all about I can't even imagine yeah I mean I'm, I'm always trying to manage my physical output mm-hmm. with working out running and then having to jump around and paint on stage yeah <laughs> I can't imagine bodybuilding being you know your full-time thing and, and getting ready for this uh, a very high level competition yeah I it's, can't imagine it's not an autopilot like switch like mm-hmm. I think a lot of people go into like these careers and they can hit that autopilot like they you know work they go to work every day they hit the email list every day they have their to-do list where it's autopilot and it you know yeah they're working yeah it's strenuous but bodybuilding is not an autopilot switch at all you're constantly like pushing your max effort every single day to showcase your final results which is again could be subjective and there's so many factors to that but you learn so much about yourself and I think that's why I've been getting the itch because I'm in that new season of like okay well my daughter's not needing me to drive her eventually anymore and I can really focus on inspiring people again how I did in the beginning but kind of showing them yeah I still have all these life issues Mm -hmm. but I'm pouring myself into showing you what's capable what you're capable of doing so um yeah I just I'm excited to see what I'm going to be doing these these next year yeah um it's gonna be a lot changing yeah this next year yeah I mean when I started my life changed when I was going through a divorce and I got into bodybuilding and I was a new mom now I'm going to a season where I'm going to get married Oh, and, fiance and, era. And my daughter is graduating. Yeah. And I might tap back into like the bodybuilding world again. Hey, why not? So, um, why not? So, yeah, it's just like, it's like a reverse, but kind of 360. Mm hmm. Um, ro- you know, your daughter, your daughter, Sophia, she, she's, uh, graduating this year. Mm hmm. And, Man, she's an incredible young woman. And for everything that you've been through, it's really incredible to see her. And I feel like she's a result of why I believe so much. Like, you're the real deal. Mm. And it's not just, like, the work you do. It's, like, what you go through to do it. Mm. But uh, what has that been like? Is it is it a balance? Is there not a balance of raising your daughter while pursuing, uh, you know, your businesses and your dreams. I stepped back from my personal goals to focus more on being the mom that she needed me to be. And as hard as it is to watch peers of mine excel in the fitness world where I had to step back from because I wanted to focus on being a mom, it can be really hard to see, but also too, I see where she's at now. And I'm so proud of like who she is and also who she's gonna become. Um, it's my biggest accomplishment for sure. Mm-hmm. It outrides any cover or title. Um, so yeah, I feel like I hit like, you know, number one <laughs> being that yeah. mom, I'm graduating with her. Yes. <laughs> we should get you a cap and gown, you know, I maybe know. like a different color or something yeah. fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. just really excited, um, to what I was able to do with, you know, being a mom and raising, a daughter, you know, it's hard. Um, yeah. But, you know, I think that, I think now is the season where she's also going to, like, step into her, you know, adulthood. And yeah. I get to do adulthood part two. <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're calling it? Adulthood um, part two? 2.0. Yeah. 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 So actually 4.0 because now it's, I'm in my 40s, so. Yeah, look, yeah, looking good for 40s. Thanks. Now, I want to <laughs> shift gears real quick. Yeah. Um, so I was doing a little research last night, and I found some questions mm. online. Now we, were, now, we were having some fun uh, while we were building this studio. We would set some chairs up in here, and we'd ask questions, just, you know, having some fun. And so I found some uh, questions on here. You know, we can talk about it. 
You up for this? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, and we can we can both chime in on this, but I'm I'm gonna pose a question to you. Uh, what do you remember? Say this again. What do you remember about the first time we met? <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't. That think, laugh says it all. I don't think everybody's ready to hear this, but it's it's probably you one of the give best the stories. Cliff notes. It's definitely one of the best stories. Yeah. Okay, so we've known each other for 20 years. Mm -hmm. We met 20 years ago when I was married to my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. And you had just started into your career of painting, performance painting. And we had a mutual friend, Kevin Costa. And he offered to us that you were this great performance painter that we had to hire for our Christmas party. And so you performed at our Christmas party. And I just remember being like, wow, he's so talented. And just being like blown away by your talent. Yeah, I remember, you know, we we're in Sacramento and it was like a, a winter gala, mm -hmm. uh, like, a, like a Christmas party. Yeah. But you, I remember this like Latina in a gala, you know, a, a gown. I'm like, <laughs> she ain't from here. No. <laughs> she is not from around this, these parts. But uh, no, you were extremely gracious mm. you welcomed me you weren't like treating me like the help on the side like uh move along little painter like you really were super sweet and mm. uh and i yeah i just I, I will never forget that so but we obviously we went on lived our lives mm -hmm. and then you know how god works there's that red string theory mm -hmm. where the chinese proverb yeah what yeah. is what is that theory uh, i don't know the verbatim but it means that um a since we have this invisible thread attached to us, since I feel like we're destined to be together, that yeah. it never breaks. It may tangle, it may, you know, be apart, but it always finds its way back together. And which, by the way, for the record, even when we reconnected, we weren't even like, mm -mm. we were friends for a year after that. Yeah. And you weren't even, you're like, I'm not trying to date. No. Especially me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just have been my friend for so long. Yeah. And so when I moved back to Sacramento seven years ago, I was trying to help a friend um, get a get back into the photography world. And I offered to tell her you should shoot some local influencers. And you were definitely on the top of my list. And I, again, wanted to help someone rebuild their life. And you, of course, said for sure but are you gonna be there I, I was i was curious just you know <laughs> the person asking me will you be there also yeah so i said yes i was I there know you said maybe uh yes i did yeah I, I wanted to come but i also knew that the timing that she could and you could yeah. i also had to pick up my daughter and my ah, daughter my daughter she can number walk. One. <laughs> she, she knows how to get home <laughs> my daughter was number one i was like all about my daughter and I still am and i didn't want to like get distracted and so also you know i know you're professional and she's a professional so but i was like i did go to the photography like little you know yeah meet up and um i said if she doesn't if you don't like her picture you don't have to post but just if you do can you please tag her just to like give her some promotion and I love the photos. Mm -hmm. The photos are great. I love the photos. And then also... She we, took a photo of us together. We got a photo together. Mm -hmm. You were like, hey, buddy. Like, yeah, I had my... Arm on my shoulder. <laughs> like, like, I think you did like the wink that you do. The typical friend zone yeah. posture. No, it's... it's Yeah. Obviously, we could share more, but it's it's been an incredible journey. Yeah. And and one that like we could have never predicted no, either. at all. Like, it's... Yeah, truly like... God has a plan, and I'm happy for it. Yeah. God's plan is always better than ours. <laughs> Absolutely. So I have another question for you. Um, what would you buy me if I gave you $5 and asked you to buy me a gift? Only $5. <laughs> uh, only $5. Yeah. Um, you're very easy to please as far as, like, when it comes to food. Mm -hmm. So if it's not a Costco hot dog. Ooh. <laughs> exactly. I mean, what else is there? There's, you know, you love a good burger. Mm. You do. It's true. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be expensive. It could be $5 or less. Yeah. On I mean, the dollar menu. Yeah. Or in and out burger. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you would have $5 wine. Would you have $5 oh, wine? Oh, hell you yeah. See? <laughs> hell yeah. Even if it's like a half a glass, like happy hour. Look, we have two buck chuck i will drink it see? and enjoy it you see what i mean you love little lunchables <laughs> too like chikuri board so i can literally buy you lunchable <laughs> with yeah. a 
two dollar bottle of wine and you'd be so happy yeah uh, I know I, I'm going to add this because I know what I would buy you. Yeah. If, I had f- if you gave me $5 and I had to buy you a gift. Yeah. What would it be? A caramel apple. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. Yes, for sure. I love caramel apples. And if I have enough, I'll buy two. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That that makes me happy. Yeah. Well, also because I can't buy a dog with $5. No, you so, can't. Yeah. All right. I just have, I have another question. <laughs> Uh, if I gave you one million dollars right now, what would you spend it on? I, and you don't have to be practical, by the way. Like, no, I know, but know. I definitely would invest it into a project where I can mm-hmm. make, you know, whether if it's real estate or a business, for sure. Because um, there's a couple of things I've I've always wanted to do. So, mm-hmm. um, you know. I mean, I I really am into fashion, so I'd probably have like an online boutique. Mm. Yeah, um, I think you'd actually would do really well at that, like curating uh, a boutique. Yeah, I just like I don't know what it is. Lately, I'm just like you know, I think I want to do like a little fashion stuff. Um, and it's Although cool. the thing you sent me the other day, <laughs> sh- you sent me, you're you're like, hey, check this out, and I'm like, this is your type of fashion. It was a big oh my oversized sweater with a kangaroo pouch. Yeah. And then the dog jumped in and looked around and it was like, I was like, this is your fashion. For sure. I definitely have a rack for like curated for like puppy stuff. Yeah. Like about 900,000 would be spent on dog fashion <laughs> curated. And then the other 100,000. Listen, in like there's a demographic de- of dog jackets. lovers. Yeah. So they would definitely be buying that for me. I... I might be buying a kangaroo pouch <laughs> dog sweater soon, so I believe it. Definitely lint rollers will be sold on my online oh, website. Oh, <laughs> yes. Dog rollers. Getting Absolutely. All dog hair. Um, what about you? What would if I gave oh. you got oh, that million dollars, mm-hmm. what would you do with it? Mm. If you gave me a million dollars. Um, like right now, you off know, the top of your head. Honestly, I would want to pay my parents Mm. thank my parents like if I could contribute if they had mortgages left or Mm -hmm. anything one of the things I see like I love seeing these videos on social media yeah where the the kid a grown child you know uh gifts their parents Mm -hmm. the pays off their mortgage for their house or all their debt yes like that's what I would do yeah I would do that too I know that like here's the thing that's not me turning that money into anything else, but mm-hmm. that's immediately what I think. Mm-hmm. Now, yes, I can go invest into a business that would grow more, and then I can do that with the money, but that's what my heart tells me to do with that. Yeah. I want to be um, – who's the guy that I said that? He's always buying people, like anybody who has like um, payment plans at Walmart for like oh, Christmas gifts. Oh, Tyler Perry. I want to be Tyler Perry. Yes. I want to just be the anonymous person helping so many people who are struggling yeah. with stuff, with financial stuff. And here's the thing, you guys. Like obviously I wanted to invest in like a small project like I was saying the online stuff. But there's so many people who just need bare necessities, mm-hmm. right? And so buying a car for someone who's been walking every day to work, you know how yeah. much that changes their life? Um, a refrigerator yeah. that works properly. A, 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 a new heater. dishwasher. Yeah. Um, this also, or just, I love to do this too, just buying the person behind me in the Starbucks line. Mm-hmm. Because I've had people do that for, for me. Yeah. And there's been times in my life where I had that happen and I was like, I, I needed that, mm-hmm. you know, where I was like, really like, okay, how much do I have to spend? Yeah. Like, all right, I'll spend this on, on the coffee yeah. person pays for it. So I just do it whether they can afford or not. You don't know. You, I don't even need the thank you, yeah. but that's something I love doing. Maybe I would do that with a million dollars too. I'd set up like a special account for mm-hmm. just uh, paying for Starbucks orders for the people behind me. Yeah. That'd or maybe a different place, not just Starbucks, even though our kids love Starbucks. Oh, we're, well, since we're always at Starbucks yeah. with our kids, yeah. it's going to happen there. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. There's a lot of parents who are struggling with their teenagers who <laughs> always that's, want Starbucks every day. Yeah. That's, that's, it is. It's for the struggling parents. Yeah, it's so expensive. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, uh, being back on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Obviously we're definitely going to do some more, Yeah, but in the past, this was the, it was the most viewed most listened to podcast. Do I don't know. Maybe, you know, someone who's watching right now, 
comment on it. Let us know what yeah. you think. or uh, Let us know what you want to hear. Yeah. Next what, time. what questions? Because obviously we can do some hot seat questions, mm -hmm. but what other questions that you'd like to hear in the future? So yeah. you can let us know. Uh, so real quick, before you wrap this up, the paint method mm -hmm. is about discovering where you are on your journey, your life journey. We only get one. Mm -hmm. And once you identify where you are, it'll help you create what's next. Or you can work on multiple things. Like one day can be a passion day, an action day, intent, new, or teach. Mm -hmm. What was what has been the most significant part in your in your life on your paint method mm -hmm. whether it was starting with passion taking action something putting intent or purpose behind something a new situation to help you grow or maybe where you're at right now which is in the teach mm -hmm. era mm -hmm. of your of your paint journey but which one stands out to you i mean action for sure you know action action that's so you it's so me <laughs> because you can have all these dreams, you can have all these aspirations, you can have all the things you want to do and, and want in your life. But if you're not applying yourself, if you're not creating that action, because action creates motivation, action creates the passion, action creates the intent. If, with, if you don't have the action, nothing's going to happen. And so when I apply myself, like I did yesterday, Right. I literally had to turn off everything. I put ADH music. Was it a playlist? <laughs> yes. It was wow. specifically ADHD music. Like just to like. <laughs> it was so loud. I walked in the house and I'm like, <laughs> what is happening in here? Like what mushrooms are you on? <laughs> and you're like, no, no, no. I'm just trying to focus and stuff. Yeah. I just because yeah. I get distracted. Uh -huh. And especially when I'm in the house, like the dogs distract me. I'm like laundry dishes. I have to do this, do that. And I'm like, I have to get this done. Mm -hmm. And action plays a huge role in my life where I would not be where I'm at, who I am without making the moves that I have done. So, you know, sign up for that show that bodybuilding show make a due date for something mm -hmm. um you know set the photo shoot up like make an appointment with someone whatever it is create that action because so you're forced to do it mm. and then see how you feel afterwards you I know like that yeah i like that well thank you for being on the number one paint method podcast <laughs> in the world. Yes. Soon to be number one paint podcast in the world. And it is only if those of you who are watching or listening, uh, just hit the follow button, follow journey, leave a review, leave a comment, mm -hmm. say what you didn't like too. I enjoy criticism because <laughs> I'm going to put it into action. So give it to me, but I love you. Thank you for I being love here. You too. Thanks guys. Yeah.